Hello and welcome to Shars Craft Haven. A crucial skill for any laser project is getting the settings right. Today I'm going to walk through my steps for making a material test card using XCS and share some tips and tricks I have learned from making my own test cards. Step one, do research. Find your laser's official or unofficial forum and search for settings for your specific material. If you're not sure if a material is laserable, find its scientific name and search it. There are many universities, library maker spaces, which have a laserable and non-laserable database that will come up in a Google search. Once you've found a setting that people are recommending, it's good to do a test card. Here we are in XCS. I'm going to insert a rectangle. Again, I prefer not to use material unless I need to. And so I'm going to do five millimeter by five millimeter. It's important that you select the process you want to do before you generate the card. Scoring, I typically wouldn't run a test card for because it looks pretty much the same. It's just a fast cutting setting. Engraving and cutting, I would definitely use for a unique uh, material. So here we go up to the array and click material test. Here's where your research uh, pays off. I would not engrave anything on 100% power. So we're going to go ahead and put this to 50. And then the minimum um, I'm going to do is 30. And then for speed, uh, I'm going to leave the max at 600. And then a light engraving, I know, uh, is 400. So these are my light engraving settings. And then I'm going to test to see if I can do a little bit more power and quicker and get good results. Again, I don't want to spend a ton of material. These are pretty narrow areas. So I'm only going to do a three by three grid. And I'm going to save space by having to be separated by one millimeter. Once this all looks good, I'm going to click OK. And it's going to generate this file. I'm going to take a picture of this with my cell phone, take a picture of the screen, so that I can go up here and click Ungroup and delete this extraneous text. This way, I can run a lot of tests, a very small amount of space. Again, you want to make sure that you've measured your thickness, and then you can click Process. Here we can see the results of our test grid. There's not a whole lot of variance, um, and so with the 600 millimeters per second, 50 power, I could probably get away with doing a light engraving and save some time. Here's another test grid, not really taking into account researching ahead of time, and some of the bottom row have actually been engraved all the way through. By just doing a little bit of research ahead of time, you can cut down the amount of material that you need for a test card, as well as save time on testing. Once you've found settings that work for you, you can enter them in. So for example, 50 power, 600 speed. And then you can click Save. Again, you want to make sure that you're on the appropriate tab as it saves them by process. Since I have multiple machines, I'm going to first put the machine, then I'm going to put the thickness of the material and the name of the material. And then if there's another note, for example, fast, that way when I come back, I can see that this is for the P2, the material thickness, the material name, and that this is a fast or light engrave. A couple of other tips since I've been doing material testing for a few years now. One is I have a physical library as well. So I have cutouts, test cuts when I found good settings. This is also really helpful for talking with people that want to do custom things as they can see the color and they can see what the engraving will look like on it. Another tip is to have a Google document with all your settings in it, just in case something happens with the settings that are saved on the machine. Thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, leave a comment with your material of choice and settings. And as always, have fun lasering.